Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Professor Dan at the University of Colorado. Um, and for our next video, we're going to we're gonna show you how to how I go about the process of making a trust. So in this class, we have um, we have to build our own trusses. And one of those things is to first make a model of it. The second is to make a CAD of that, or CAD up the model. And we're going to learn some things through that process. And then finally, we have to create this thing. Um, so after you create the model in MS Solids or MATLAB or however you want to make it, um, we got we to gotta take it from the model stage and, and actually start thinking about how we're going to build this thing. So that's what we'll do today. So in front of us, I'm using Onshape. Um, and the trust I'm making doesn't actually fill the, the criteria for our, um, for our assignment. And I do that on purpose. So you're not just trying to make the same trust that I'm making. Um, so the first thing we do is we draw the outline. So I'm just going to show it. So I've already drawn my truss. I've already made my truss um, in Onshape here. And so the first thing we do is we basically draw the, the model that we create, that we've tested in MATLAB or MS Solids. And let's go into it. Let's see how I did that. Um, so what do we need to do? We need to make sure our truss fits in our testing apparatus. So we need to make sure it's between 22 and 23 inches. So how do we do that? Well, our model, this is 11.25 plus 11.25. By my calculations, that's, that's uh, um, yeah, that's 22 and a half inches. Um, the next thing I did is I just assigned a, um, an angle. So I drew up this member and that's 11.25 inches. And then I made two equal, um, make two equal, uh, 45 degree, um, lines and got to find these two lines and they actually hit. So those are coincident. Then I did the same thing on the other side and I drew a line connecting the top. And you'll see that all of these are construction lines because I actually don't want to build this. Um, this is just going to make sure that when I build something, I don't violate the trust assumptions, which is that we have pin joints at all of our connections. Now, when we actually build this, we're going to use gusset plates. So the key is to make sure that all of our center lines are aligned and going through these points. Otherwise, we violate the trust assumption. Um, so there we go. We put our outline in and we draw that up. All right, so the next things you'll see on the side here are a bunch of, um, these are variables. And so you go up here to the variable and you can define, so for me, I defined length one. If I wanted to change that to maybe be a little longer or shorter, I didn't want to go change my whole model. The thickness, the thickness is just the thickness of my wood. So when I extrude, I always go to the same thickness. So again, if I have a little bit shorter or longer, I can um, I can change that easily. I have some different other lengths, and if I want to change those, I can also change those. And then my gusset thickness, um, that was about an eighth of an inch. The next thing I did was I assigned a mirror plane, and that's just going to be the plane um, that is going to go through the middle of my truss. And we'll talk about why I did that later on. Um, but yeah, so how do we actually build these things? So first thing I built was my first member, it's just a rectangle. So it's a rectangle. If we look at it, it's a rectangle that's three quarters of an inch wide. And um, it is 11.225 inches long. Um, it's yeah, we don't want to we can't hit our members in the middle. So we have to have a little space there. So I said, what's a little space? How about we take off a, a little bit of our length so we don't make a masonry truss, which I believe it's called. Um, so yeah, so I drew that one up and then next thing I did is I drew up sketch three. So let's unhide sketch three. So I drew up the other member. So we have sketch one and sketch three. So two members, we have some symmetry. Then I extruded that to the thickness. So if we look at the thickness, the depth was um, using that variable thickness. Great. And then I come up with part one. All right. So I extrude our different parts. And if we unhide those, we can see what's going on. In theory, sometimes it's easier. Oh, I got to just hit. Yeah, I want that. So now we're there we go. So we can see those are my first two. And those are just wooden 
pieces of wood that we cut. Next thing I do is I look at sketch four. Okay, I draw another rectangle. And already we start to see when we build this thing, we can't build it the exact length of our MATLAB model, of our MS Solids model. We have to make it a little shorter because we have a thickness that we have to incorporate. So I do that. Sketch six, let's do the same thing. Okay, yeah, there we go. Um, and then I extrude those two things. So let's show those parts. Doop, doop. And then same thing, sketch seven. All right, so yeah, so we can't go the whole way, but we notice that our center lines are always intersecting right at the point where we'd expect them to in our model. So it's really important to have that outline behind everything. So the next thing we'll show sketch eight and sketch nine. And now we see some numbers are actually substantially shorter than our model predicted. It's because we have this thickness and we can't be budding. So let's just show all those parts. We'll extrude those, just give them some thickness and they become, I don't know, I say they become real. All right, so now we have all of our members here. How do we keep them together? Well, we say we use gusset plates. So all of our center lines are aligned. None of our members are touching. We're good. So now we have to create our gusset. So it's nice to create them in um, in a CAD program. Uh, we can calculate how long we need our gussets. That's what we did in our, um, potentially in an Excel, but we have some hand calculations or Excel calculations. So we know how long we can cover each member. And yeah, so then we build a gusset and then we can just mirror that. So that's how I do that. And then we extrude it, so check. So then we extrude it and we give it some thickness. Sure thing, yeah, that's what we did. All right, and now we can see that those parts are created and we do that with all our gussets. And that's pretty much how we do each face of our, or, or the first face of our, um, of our truss. And now we probably want to just do the back face too, right? We don't want to just have connections on one side. So how do we do that? Well, for me, I just, um, I just mirrored it. So I have all of our parts and that's why we had our mirror plane going right down the middle of our truss there. You can see the mirror plane. Um, and then we just hit mirror and then voila, we have all of those gussets mirrored in perfect locations on the back. All right, so that's how we create this thing in CAD. Um, how do we make sure we can build it? Well, one of the things it said was to make sure you have a one-to-one -one scale drawing of it. Um, and so make a drawing. Um, so go to Parts Studio or even Assembly and right-click um, and you can create drawings. So you go to Create Drawings. And now you have your drawing. You can select if you wanted a scale of one to one, um, which I do. So this is a pretty big piece of paper. Um, and then we need to go to Kinko's or um, Josh over the Idea Forge had a lot of good ideas on how to do that one to one. But in general, that's our process. So good luck. Um, and yeah, hopefully it works well for you. I don't go through everything. So yeah, you kind of have to make your own CAD, but you can see the general process. All right, hope that helped. Uh, good luck trussing. All right, bye-bye.